Welcome everyone. Today we are delving into a critical chapter of history to answer a fundamental question. Why did Hitler invade the Soviet Union? Strap in as we unravel the complex motives behind this pivotal moment in World War II. Hitler's decision to launch Operation Barbarossa in 1941 marked a turning point. And understanding the reasons behind it takes us deep into the mind of one of history's most infamous figures. Join us as we explore the factors that drove Hitler to take such a drastic and fateful step. If you are curious about the historical events that shaped our world, you are in the right place. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more engaging content, and let's dive into the story behind Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Union. Hitler had huge ambitions, but the Germany he controlled had limited means. In the early 20th century, Germany was not the economic powerhouse that we know today. It had strong industries equal to that of Britain, but a huge proportion of Germany's workforce remained in agriculture, around 30%, compared to less than 10% in Britain. Furthermore, the farms they worked on were small peasants' farm, the kind that Britain and the US had done away with. As such, German firms were half as productive as British ones. Hitler, fearing economic weakness, believed in a global Jewish conspiracy. He saw threats everywhere harbored anti-Slavic sentiments and accused Jews of wielding immense influence in political, financial, and cultural spheres, particularly in the United States and Britain. Hitler believed Germany was surrounded by enemies and needed strength to survive. Ironically, he drew inspiration from the contradictory view of the United States he saw America as controlled by international jury, limiting Germany's access to resources, yet was fascinated and envious of its conditions. In 1938, Germany was densely populated with 146 people by square kilometer, while the United States had a spacious 16 people by square kilometer. Gaining Lebensraum in the East would not only help German firms, but also provide the needed raw materials. These ideas were not new. Germany had tried them during World War I on the Eastern Front, successfully conquering territories in Poland, the Baltic and Western Russia under Uber First Command. Under Hindenburg and Ludendorff, Germany became a colonial possession aimed at economic exploitation and Germanizing its ethnicities. These plans were partly realized before Germany's defeat in 1918, but the ideas persisted. In a 1930s illustrated history from Germany, we see the concept of racial science, depicting pure Germanic youth against the perceived degenerate Jewish youth. A crude world map such as revolutions instigated by Jews and Freemasons, illustrating Hitler's view of the undermatched conflicting Jews, Slavs, and Communists. These groups were seen as targets for subjugation and extermination in Germany's eastward cultural mission achievable only through war. From 1932, Hitler began to transform the German economy. Between 1932 and 1938, German spending on the military rose from 8% of GDP to 20.5%. Hitler also began a foreign policy of aggression, including remilitarization of the Rhineland, the Anaskulas with Austria, and the annexation of the Sudanland. However, this aggression helped spark a global arms race amongst all major powers. 
and although Germany had started first, its late was shrinking. Hitler wanted to strike while he still had the chance and began the Second World War in Europe in September 1939. At first, the Germans were success surprised everyone, even themselves. They kicked France out but faced a dilemma. While controlling a strong military occupying Western Europe or send their resource shortage, German occupation and the British blockade left Europe lacking food, coal, and oil. Despite Britain staying in the way, supported by the powerful United States, Germany's industry struggled. Hitler had to act fast. Such were the shortages in Germany's European Empire that it took an alliance with the Soviet Union just to stay afloat. As agreed in the 1939 Nazi-Soviet pact, Soviet grain oil and raw materials flowed into Germany and in return German industrial output was delivered to the Soviet Union. Each side was essentially preparing the other for the great battle that was to come. But time was not on Hitler's side in raw materials or production. In 1941, German industry produced 11,000 aircraft, with Nazi-occupied France and the Netherlands supplying just 78. Meanwhile, British production reached 20,000, plus another 5,000 supplied by the US on the land lease. As Germany faced resource shortages, Hitler risked relying on the Soviet Union, which Berlin found unacceptable due to their disdain for communism. To solve this, Hitler invaded the Soviet Union allying his ideological goals with the urgent economic need during the war. In December 1940, Germany planned to blitzkrieg against the Soviet Union. The largest army in history aimed to capture the AA line from Archangel to Astrakhan, fulfilling Hitler's long-desired resources and population. A quick victory was crucial Germany's economic weakness made the invasion a means to secure the strength needed against Britain and the US. Hitler, fueled by racist beliefs and confidence from past campaigns, thought success was possible. However, capturing Soviet Lebensraum didn't solve Germany's problem. Without addressing the people there, Germany struggled to feed itself to utilize these lands, millions would have to perish. The attack on the Soviet Union was conducted in the context of three distinct but closely linked programs of mass murder, a systematic killing project of almost unimaginable proportions. Best known of the three is the so-called final solution of the Jewish question, the extermination of the Jews of Europe in which six million people were murdered. Less well-known are the other two, the General Plan East and the Hunger Plan. The General Plan East, a first debt of which was prepared for SS Chief Himmler, was a demographic master plan for the occupied Eastern terrorists. It provided for the removal of most of the conquered populations from their homelands to create their living space needed for German settlers. It envisaged the displacement of a staggering 30 to 40 million people, with the assumption taken for granted that a very large proportion of this number would perish as a direct result of the program. The third pillar of Nazi genocidal planning in the East was the Hunger Plan. This was substantially the brainchild of Herbert Blake. Chief of the rich Ministry of Food and Agriculture. It provided for the ruthless expropriation and exploitation of Soviet agriculture to feed the German army and the German domestic population at the expense of the inhabitants of the USSR. Beck, Goring, and other Nazi leaders openly talked of the systematic starving to death of 20 to 30 million 
Soviet citizens as a result of this program. Of the three master plans which drove Hitler's ambitions in the East, the final solution of the Jewish cushion was the only one that came anywhere close to being carried out. The difficulties of civil administration and the failure of the campaign meant that the others progressed very little beyond the decks of Nazi bureaucrats. Among the actual victims claimed by the hunger plan, Soviet POWs were the main group. They were deliberately starved and ill-treated to cause maximum deaths of a two million, so that more Russians could go to the German soldiers. In conclusion, Hitler's grand plans for the East were terrifying in their scale. The infamous final solution aimed to exterminate six million Jews. But there were two other chilling schemes. The general plan asked envisioning the displacement of 30 to 40 million people and the hunger plan intending to starve 20 to 30 million Soviets. Fortunately, only the final solution came close to reality due to administrative challenges and campaign failures. Yet had Hitler's megalomaniacal ambitions unfolded, the victims of Nazi genocide could have numbered in the tens of millions more. These horrific plans were the dark prelude to Hitler's vision of a supreme global power, ready to conquer international jury and what he deemed degenerate empires like the US and Britain. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of history's darkest chapters. If you found this video informative, please like, share and subscribe for more insights. Remember, understanding our past is crucial for shaping a better future. Until next time, take care.